I'm an Englishman. I'm from Bermondsey, South East London. My father was called George. He was also from Bermondsey. His father, another Bermondsey man, was called George too. And his father, my great-grandfather, is from the same place. He was called Edward. These three generations of my family were in the fish trade. I'm the first member of my family not to work at the market in Billingsgate. My great-grandfather had 11 brothers and sisters. They all married, except one. They had 43 children. Of these, 37 married, and between them they had a further 159 children. One of those was my father. I don't know exactly how many of his generation married or exactly how many children they produced. I've so far trapped over 200 of them. Many still live in Bermondsey. Some are still in the fish trade. There are seven called George and five called Victoria. I stand here in front of you as a representative of all of them. And I ask in their name the great question put by our patron, Mr. Powell. What do they know of England who only England know? Or what can my family who come from England, who lived in England, who know only England, say of this, our country? Mr. Powell once spoke of the destruction of ancient Athens and the miraculous survival in the blackened ruins of that city of the sacred olive tree, the symbol of Greece, their country. And he also spoke of us, the English, at the heart of a vanished empire, seeming to find within ourselves, like one of our own oak trees, the sap rising from our ancient roots. And he said, perhaps after all, we who have inhabited this island fortress for an unbroken thousand years, brought up, as he said, within the sound of English birdsong, under the English oak, in the English meadow, beneath the red cross of St. George, it is us who know most of England. And I appreciated him for saying that, because it was as if he spoke for my family, who understand well their own country, who understand even better their own capital, London town, as we used to call her, as we strolled in her parks, as we marveled at her palaces, as we did business in the city, went west for a dance, took a boat on the river, the pale ale and eel pie of old London, the London of my family, for as many generations as I know, the London that within 15 years will be less than 50% white. London where in 15 years, a white person will be in the minority. Am I racist? No. Do I have anything against people of other races? No. Would I prevent them from coming into my home? No. So what then is my gripe? My gripe. And I speak on behalf of seven men called George and five women called Victoria. My gripe is quite simple. My gripe is that we were never asked. My gripe is that we were told, not asked. And every day we are told again and again how we are to be and how our country is to be. We're told by them. We know they are. They're English too. They're the class that has always set themselves apart. They're the class that has always taken whatever they wanted for themselves. And now they are the class that is giving England away. They have never asked us, and they never will. Do we allow them to sell our heritage? Or is it time for us to speak? Use them the right to give away our holy, our bountiful, our only England that has, that has nurtured us, naked, grown us as the oak. Is it time for us that England know to come yet again and defend our country? Is it time for our sons to rise again? 